Sony is basically forcing you to buy a new SSD. Is it time for the PS5 Pro? Big shout out to Sony for killing off the PSVR 1. And also down in the description, I have a ton of links to controllers, SSDs, TVs, monitors, headsets, any accessory you need for your PS5, I have a link for it down in the description. So if you wanna help me out, use those links. How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. This is the weekly news show where I look around the entire internet and find the five biggest PlayStation news stories for the week. Starting out with this awesome post I found on Reddit, Reddit. This isn't a leak or rumor or anything. I know that there's a ton of those to talk about. This is just a cool art piece I found over on Reddit from the user PA01. Basically what this person does is they take the biggest PlayStation franchises like God of War, Horizon, and The Last of Us, and instead of making alternate box art, which people love to do for PlayStation games, they make cassette tape covers for these games and they look awesome. I kind of want to go get some of them printed out and like put them in cassette tapes because they would look really cool on a shelf. And the interesting thing is we were kind of wondering here what the QR code does on the front of all these art pieces and basically if you scan the QR code it takes you right to this person's like art site because it honestly fits in pretty well on the front of this pseudo cassette tape art piece thing that they've created. Out of the four that were posted on Reddit between God of War, Horizon, The Last of Us Part 1, and The Last of Us Part 2, my two favorites are definitely obviously The Last of Us Part 1 having just finished that game again. That was totally worth the upgrade like after playing it. I'm just like yeah, I know, it's 70 bucks, you don't get the multiplayer, but all of the improvements really added up to a better experience for me, and that game was fresh in my mind. And then the second favorite art piece out of all of these is Horizon. I just love the purple, I think it looks great. That nice out of focus like look where you're far away from the tall neck and it makes it look like Jurassic Park. I mean, how can you beat it? I still haven't really sunk too much time into Horizon Forbidden West, but that's probably gonna be either my Thanksgiving break or Christmas break game where I can just like dig into it and sink hours and hours and hours into it. But yeah, I'll link this Reddit post down in the description if you wanna check it out. I just thought it was cool and thought you guys might wanna know about it. Next up, let's talk about this huge Grand Theft Auto 6 leak. This happened at like two in the morning Saturday night and I was actually still awake because I was playing God of War on my Steam Deck and I saw everything starting to come out and it ended up being over 90 videos of actual gameplay from Grand Theft Auto 6. And we got some big confirmations. Like, yes, we will be playing as both a male and a female throughout the story. They look really cool. This is also going to take place in Vice City, which is great because Vice City is the coolest one in my opinion. I mean, you had Ray Liotta as the main character and so many great classic movie actors from all these mob movies in the actual game. And just Vice City in the 80s, the soundtrack, how can you beat it? So going back to that location in a huge modern Grand Theft Auto game, I am all for it. But this was definitely a great test case as to why they don't announce games or show gameplay earlier because people were looking at this like pre-pre-L alpha footage of Grand Theft Auto 6 and saying, why does it look bad? Guys, they don't just make the game looking like how you see it when it comes out. That's not how it's developed. Basically, it gets better and better looking as the game is developed. And I thought that was more common knowledge, but I saw a lot of people saying that this looked bad. And it's like, yeah, they're not done with the game yet. The big problem with leaks like this, other than the marketing thing, which I don't really care so much about, is that people are spending a lot of time working on this and they should be able to pick when it's shown off to the public, right? Like they should have some say in when we get to see this stuff because then you run the risk of people doing what they're doing with this alpha footage right now and saying it looks bad. And that sucks for everyone involved because we don't know what this game is ultimately gonna look like. And now they have to do a lot of work to make it ultimately look a lot better than what we saw in this leak. So I would guess this game is probably going to get delayed despite the fact that Rockstar came out and confirmed these leaks and said that they're sticking to the track that they were already on, I would guess that we're going to see some sort of internal delay just to beef this game up an extra level and make it look even better. So we'll play it in like 2029. You know, we'll be like, damn, this looks awesome. Grand Theft Auto 6 is incredible. I can't believe it leaked uh, like what, eight years ago. Take Two was suing people for modding games. So I really wouldn't mess with them. I think this person made a big mistake messing with their biggest cash cow as well. Uh, I would expect that they're going to get sued into oblivion. And their whole goal here was I guess to like make a deal with Take Two to buy back the source code for Grand Theft Auto 5 and 6. I don't know, seems like a super short-sighted goal. And personally, I'm getting sick of leaks. You guys know I have a movie channel too where I cover the Halloween franchise. And I feel like everything leaks now between like Toby, Andrew, and Tom Holland all being together in Spider-Man to Halloween ends pretty much already having its whole plot leaked. It's just getting really frustrating. 
that people have essentially turned their career into ruining movies and games before they come out. And I don't really understand why, because I can't imagine they're making much money off of this, right? Like if you see a tweet that leaks a game, you're not gonna click the person's website and read about the leak. You're just gonna look at the tweet. So yeah, not really generating a ton of income if you ask me. Either way, kind of cool to see Grand Theft Auto 6 in action. And then it sucks when you think about the implications of what's happening because of it, but it's spilt milk now. Can't put it back in the bottle. I'm excited for this game and I feel for all the people at Rockstar out there. Sony, we really got to figure something out here with the whole PS4 situation because I thought personally God of War Ragnarok was going to be one of the last, if not the last big PS4 game that also comes to PS5 or reverse it, big PS5 game that also comes to PS4. Either way, I was excited to finally be done with this console because we're two years into the life cycle of the PS5. The PS5 Slim is obviously on the horizon as well as the PS5 Pro. So yeah, the first couple years of the PS5, I think it's fair to say the console hasn't really been pushed to its limit just yet because every game that has come out has basically been forced to run on PS4 as well. And I was super stoked now that Resident Evil Village is out and we're moving on to Resident Evil 4 Remake to finally have a truly next gen Resident Evil game. And here we are. During the Tokyo Game Show live stream, they announced that yes, Resident Evil 4 is coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and now PS4. Not the Xbox Xbox One, they're leaving that one on the table is just too weak, but they're putting it on PS4. Now the silver lining here, of course, is that it's the RE engine. The RE engine is like super scalable. It runs all the way down on a Nintendo Switch and Monster Hunter Rise really runs pretty well on the Switch. So you can kind of see how they were like, eh, we're developing this for next gen consoles and we think we can get it in good shape on PS4. So we'll release it there. Either way though, I'm just disappointed about this news. I guess you could look at it one way and say that they've always been developing it for PS4 or with that console in mind so this game was already held back from the start or you could say that they were looking at it and they're almost done with the game and they're just like sitting there like well we could spend this extra time we have porting it over to the ps4 and we're starting with the base ps5 game and working our way down that's kind of where i want to believe the situation is lying that this was always supposed to be a next gen only game and they're like well we have the headroom on the ps4 we can really work on it and get it ported there i really hope this is the last big ps4 game i I'm just sick of that thing existing there, sounding like an aircraft carrier. And I feel like at this point, if you don't have a PS5, I'm gonna say it, you're not trying hard enough because they're not that hard to get anymore. All right, now we gotta talk about the other big controversy from the weekend, which I guess Sony is thankful for all this GTA stuff because it kind of seemed to come and go. Basically on the official PlayStation podcast, it was announced that the PSVR 2 will not support PSVR 1 games. But in my mind, I think they announced this like over a year ago where they were like, yeah, it's going to require new developed games to run on the PSVR 2 and we're not going to be able to support PSVR 1 out of the gate. Now on the surface with like any other console, like with the PS5, right? If they came out and said, oh, the PS5 will not support PS4 games, but it's just going to be like a very iterative update on the PS4 Pro, I'd be pretty pissed off. But when you look at VR and how big of a leap the PSVR 1 is to the PSVR 2, they really are entirely different consoles. I mean, the easiest way to look at it is just to compare the controllers. The Sense controllers are basically a split in half dual sense with the features of the Valve Knuckles kind of in there and also the Oculus Touch controllers. The controllers for the PSVR 1 are the PlayStation Move controllers from the PlayStation 3. The way that the tracking works on the original PSVR is a webcam is tracking light balls that are connected to these like knockoff Wiimote. And then if you look at the way that the PSVR 2 works, uh, you're using tracking that's built into the headset. Like there are cameras on the headset that are able to sense where the actual controllers are. And the only issue I've ever experienced with that on the Oculus Quest 2 is that when you put your uh, hands behind your head, if you put them back too far and the cameras can't really sense where they're at, it kind of does its like next best guess at where your arm is. And if there's ever a disconnect between where your mind thinks your hand is and where your hand is in the virtual world, that is an instant headache and it's super annoying. But I will say with the jump from the Oculus Oculus Quest 1 to the 2, they improved that feature vastly and I have a good feeling that Sony is going to be able to beat them at their own game with the PSVR 2. And it's not really as simple as like, oh, this game is on PSVR 1 and the Oculus Quest 2, why can't they just port it over to the PSVR 2 easily? The PSVR 2 apparently is using an entirely different like base engine to run these games in the first place. So it's not like you can just throw down a patch for Astro Bot Rescue Mission. The best thing Sony can really do, I think personally, is port over Astro 
Astrobot and then just make it a cheaper or free upgrade for people. But any of the VR devs could do that. They'll just have to pick and choose how they want that upgrade to happen. And in my opinion, if they're smart, they'll make it a free upgrade and take the cost hit on porting it over. Because how many people are there really that have PSVR ones? I mean, I know it was successful enough to make a PSVR 2, but I don't think there's really that many people out there where doing this port from PSVR 1 to 2 and then making it free for those people would really eat into the sales overall. Because if you look at the performance and just like the overall impressions of the PSVR 1 to 2, the 2 is getting like rave reviews. And in comparison, it's not even close. If you're an NBA fan who hasn't bought a new SSD for your PS5, now is the time when you're going to want to start looking because the file size for NBA 2K23 is egregious. That is the word I'm going to use because it is over 143 gigabytes on the PS5. And that's basically a quarter of the actual onboard storage that you have available. So if you have stuff on your console like The Last of Us Part 1, the new Modern Warfare 2 beta, Warzone, you're really going to have to start deleting some stuff to even be able to play NBA 2K23. And this game I've seen getting kind of shredded by reviews for being more pay to win than all of the other editions of NBA 2K over the past few years. Gonna be real, haven't really kept up with the NBA games, but yeah, this just seems like the icing on the cake for a lot of frustrations that fans are having with this franchise. If you want a middle of the road, great bang for your buck option, I'm going to recommend the Samsung 980 Pro because that's the one that I use in my PS5 and I could not be happier with it. If you guys follow me on Twitter at Jimmy Champagne, I've been sharing a ton of clips of The Last of Us Part 1 as I made my way through it. And I basically recorded that entire game onto my two terabyte drive. And I was able to go back and just select and pick and choose which ones I wanted to keep, which ones I wanted to delete. I transferred some over to a USB drive. It was super fast. So it seems extremely reliable because I've had it in my PS5 for over a year at this point and it's working great. These things are also rapidly coming down in price. So if you want to get a two terabyte one, it's only $250. And a one terabyte one is 145. Honestly, I would pay the extra hundred bucks and get two terabytes because these things fill up super quick, but you'll have a lot of headroom if you get the two terabyte drive. If you're someone who lives or dies by that official PlayStation branding, you can get the WD Black SN850. They have an official one. It's $260 for a two terabyte version, but you can get the normal non PS5 branded one for 250. And I would just save the 10 bucks, honestly. I don't think there's really any difference between them. And also the LED effects you get on the official one, I'm pretty sure are on the non-official one and you're not gonna see them anyway. Even if they aren't, you're not gonna see them. So like why pay the 10 extra dollars for an LED effect that you're not even gonna use? If you're someone who has the need for speed, you should go with the Fire Cuda 530. That was one we picked up and put in the PS5 and we tested like all of the different drives available. And that was the fastest by a pretty noticeable margin. Like whether it was downloading a game transferring a game from a disc, transferring a game from the internal to the external SSD. It outperformed all of the other ones. I just haven't spent as much time with it as the Samsung 980 Pro or the WD Black SN850, but I feel pretty safe recommending this because we really put it through its paces and it survived the test. The only drive I would kind of stay away from is the Corsair MP600 Pro. Uh, we bought this one and it had some really good numbers on the box, but it did not get anywhere close to the advertised numbers. And the funny thing is it's also the cheapest. It's two 25 for a two terabyte and 125 for a one terabyte, but you're saving money and getting worse performance. So I would pay the extra money and just get one of the other three that I recommended. I think all of those are going to do you just fine. And you might just squeeze by with enough space for NBA 2K23 and maybe even NBA 2K24 when it's 500 gigabytes next year.